I have a picture in my head of a place that has a feeling. It's amazing. <laughs> La vita è iniziata di nuovo. Adesso. It's incredible. It's amazing. I don't draw like the others do. Herzlich willkommen zur Königsklasse. <lacht> das ist spektakulär. There's two types of people in this world. Predators. I don't like you. And prey. This movement that we are in is called a struggle. Because we are fighting for our lives. Algo está pasando. Are you ready to meet your soulmate? You're going to have to choose. You ever wish that today happened on a different day? Well, I be damn. Look who done come up in here. I like that. So cool. Who's the wagon? Hello everyone, welcome, and thank you for joining us today. I am Nandini Ayer, and I'll be the moderator for the event. First of all, I want to take uh, the time to thank you all for joining us on Twitch today. We regularly host events such as these, and so if you're interested, please like our page so you can subscribe for notifications. We've received a number of questions from you today, so thank you for time, the time to taking taking the time to submit them. We'll also be taking um, questions um, live, so feel free to drop them into the chat window. With that said, I'd like to introduce our panelists for today. Uh, would each of you please go ahead and introduce yourself, tell us what you do for Prime Video, and also to get to know you a little bit better, tell us what you're watching right now on Prime Video. Winston, please lead the way. Cool, thanks, Nandini. And I, once again, thank you for each one of you who have uh, joined today. Uh, we are all quite excited, and I'm very excited to be able to join and talk to all of you and answer the questions that you have submitted. So my name is B.A. Winston, and I've been here in Amazon and Prime Video for approximately seven years now. I'm a Vice President Technology. I head up product tech operations organizations for the core video streaming related technology for video on demand and live, including ad related technologies and also security for prime video. Uh, in simple terms, think of it as everything uh, that needs to happen to deliver a good streaming experience when you hit play on any device for any content anywhere in the world. It's quite interesting and quite challenging and uh, obviously have um, grown a lot in the last uh, seven years that I've been here. Uh, on a personal side, we live here in Seattle. Prior, prior to that, we spent approximately 15 years in the DC metro area. And I used to work for Sirius XM radio and headed up their internet streaming product group. And uh, we have uh, five kids. And uh, so all of our activities kind of revolve around them. And more recently, we started watching Tintin. Uh, probably nobody's watching that now. And uh, some of you may have uh, grown up reading the Tintin comics, and I've loved reading them when I was small. It seems to drive an interesting and thrilling time for each one of us. So back to good old times. Yeah, big fan of Tintin, Winston. <laughs> uh, Trisha, you're the re relatively new to this group. So why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about what you do for Prime Video? Yes, thank you. Hey, everybody. Thanks for being here. My name is Trisha Lee. I'm a general manager for the group called X-Ray within Prime Video, which is a multidisciplinary team, product engineering, design, engineer, uh, content executives that builds features to run alongside the content that you stream on Prime Video. So it's designed to connect you more deeply to the content that you love. So for a movie or a TV show, that's like answering your questions like, who's that actor? What's that music? Maybe some cool trivia and also some bonus content. And for 
sports like NFL and French Open and others, instant replays, next-gen stats, team player info, we're just getting started. Uh, as Nandini mentioned, I'm a bit newer to Amazon. I'm uh, just over four months in. In my past lives, I was head of product for Quibi, uh, head of global tech for a cruise company called Viking Cruises, uh, and have stints leading teams in Sony uh, OTT digital supply chain and other startups that didn't quite survive. Uh, I live in Los Angeles. I'm based here. My husband is actually a film composer, so right brain, left brain. Uh, I enjoyed getting out, uh, hitting the tennis court, going for a run, or doing escape rooms is the other thing that I like to do in my spare time. Uh, and I am super excited about diving into the recent release season of Lux Listing Sydney because I have a love for reality television and also for like really fancy real estate that is just fun to dream about that I don't live in. But um, yeah, anyway, I'm excited to be here today. Great, Trisha. I can relate to that. Uh, looking at those rentals that you don't live in but wish you could afford. Yes, absolutely. Um, I'll, I'll go next. Um, I'm Nandini Ayer and I am the head of product for Prime Video Analytics and Playback. Like Tushu, I'm relatively new. I'm about eight months new to Amazon, or should I say eight months old, because I, I'm learning so much. Time goes by so fast here. And um, I've spent about 20 years in the media and entertainment uh, industry in various roles on the service provider and then with technology vendors um, in uh, the more recent past. And uh, I'm binge. I just finished binge watching the Indian Doctor series on Prime Video. It's a very topical um, kind of series uh, about how the world dealt with uh, another kind of pandemic, uh, the influenza. Uh, probably something I shouldn't be talking about because people don't want to be reminded of it. Um, so I'll hand over the baton then to Nate to, to introduce himself. Hey there. So my name is Nate. I've been at Amazon uh, about nine years, uh, all of those in generally in the product area. Uh, right now, I head up product and CX tech for our live events organization. And so essentially, my team is charged with ensuring we're always delivering a compelling and interesting CX for all of the live events that we deliver for our customers. So partner super closely with Winston's org, I Manisha, so frankly, all the people on today around that uh, to make sure that we do that. Uh, before that, I was head of product for Prime Video's international team. So thinking all about our international customers broadly and what are some of the key things we need to do to be able to serve them. And before that, I was a product manager on the Kindle uh, team, thinking about how do we make the reading experience better. Uh, in past lives, I was a uh, I was a management consultant. I was also an attorney for a number of years in Washington, D.C. So it sort of floated around um, and made a few career switches along the way. Uh, you know, uh, also based here in Seattle, but have worked with teams and individuals across the country and across the across the globe. Uh, you know, we we're talking about some of the things we're enjoying watching, perhaps in a bit of a uh, turn from some of the other things that folks have been watching. I have been watching uh, Underground Railroad, which is, you know, a, a great but not a lighthearted show. So I would recommend it if you've got some time and want to do some thinking. Uh, but it's a it's a really a great show uh, available on Prime Video. Great. And Manish, last but not the least, please introduce yourself. Yeah. Hi, um, my name is Manish Rao. I'm the uh, director of uh, video delivery at Prime Video. So I lead the tech teams that power playback um, and transport live and on-demand content uh, to Prime Video customers globally. Uh, I've been at Amazon and Prime Video for 3.5 years now. Um, and uh, prior to that, I've you know I've been in the telecom and uh, media and streaming uh, space for about 20 years now. Um, I was a leading engineering at a company called Brightcove uh, prior to joining Amazon. Um, I'm currently watching uh, the final season of Bosch uh, and, and another great uh, Amazon original. Absolutely. Um, we have a number of great questions that uh, the audience has submitted, so let's dive right in. I'll uh, start with the first question. What excites you most about the future of uh, Prime Video? Trisha, since you have the freshest perspective here, why don't you get us started here? 
Absolutely. So I'll share the reasons why I decided to join Prime Video because they remain true today as five months ago. So uh, I've been passionate about the entertainment and tech intersection for well over 20 years. I've seen it from a lot of different angles, including of where I grew up at Microsoft. And the, I actually really believe the industry over those 20 years has only really started to scratch the surface of new types of experiences around streaming and that intersection. And Prime Video is committed to that space. And they're committed to that innovation. Uh, it's, I mean, it's part of our leadership principles and day one culture, just generally as a culture, but also at a massive scale. I mean, if you think about the global reach of where PV touches, we're into the nine digits of customer impact. It's, it's really quite rad. And so uh, in that intersection, Amazon, like as a whole has all the components and the runway to knit together all of the different product groups and experiment into that intersection of streaming entertainment and technology. I mean, just on X-Ray alone, we're doing things with storytellers, with shopping, with music, and sports is a whole nother universe. Uh, you love to partner with Nate all the time on that. And we just did next-gen stats for tennis on the French Open. We're investing in AI, CVML to do things that, quite frankly, only we can do over the entire catalog of sports and video. And at root, I'm an entrepreneur at heart. So whether that's at a big company or a small company, and Prime Video is all of that wrapped up into one and has all of the ingredients uh, as we continue to innovate day over day. And I think uh, the future is endless in our imagination. And so I'm so excited at the commitment of this organization to uh, lean into that intersect. And so uh, that's why I'm excited to be here. Yeah, it's so great to hear, uh, Tricia, and, uh, you know, there's so many overlaps with, um, uh, you know, my reason for joining Prime Video, too. I think we are at such an interesting time right now in the OTT space, and consumers have so much choice um, and, uh, you know, the ability to get great content with great quality and service. And Prime Video, uh, for me, is at the forefront of that. We offer such a vast catalog of content, but we offer it in myriad of ways that the customers can consume, not just... Um, in specific parts of the globe, but we are a global um, service and we uh, service millions of customers. And for me, what really attracted me to Prime Video was Amazon's culture of customer obsession and the ability to think big and think long term. So it really allows you to, uh, you know, as a product innovator, for me, bringing products that delight customers has always been like my mojo. And to be able to innovate without having to, you know, deliver results in the short term, balance the short term with the long term and really delight customers. I mean, that opportunity is tremendous. It's such a humbling experience to be able to be responsible for delivering video content, content to millions of customers, and especially at a time like this where video is providing much needed respite for people watching at home. Uh, it's really um, a very humbling experience, and it, uh, you know, it's great to know that you can have that kind of impact. Um, Nate, what are your thoughts here? Yeah, I mean, playing on some of the things that y'all have already said i think the the thing that gets me excited is we are in a unique position to transform the way customers globally get to enjoy content and find content whether that's movies tv series or really the area i work in uh around live content and live events it's uh we're able to operate at that scale deliver the innovative experiences that you all have referenced and do it in a way that really transforms the way that people actually get to you know, enjoy enjoy all of this content that we provide. And so that's super exciting to me. We're already seeing the impact that we're able to make in different regions around the world and different countries with some of the live events we deliver. And then I think one of the things you said, Nandini, which also really excites me because it ties in with live events, is we're able to make big bets. Not all of them are going to pay off, and we're okay with that. Like they're all going to be attempts to make the experience better for customers and to, to deliver more content in an innovative way and so you know at amazon and within prime video like there is that appetite to say go take those big bets see how you can change the way customers uh enjoy entertainment and you know we'll see what happens and i think that's super exciting and gives you sort of that fire every day to go out and try new things and, and find new paths yeah, absolutely, Nate. I, I mean, I know, Winston, you've been here since the very inception and seen Prime Video go from, uh, you know, a VOD business to live business. So would love to hear your perspective about uh, this topic. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I've seen Prime Video grow from a pretty small service 
not significant in this landscape to where it is today. We, uh, um, we've grown globally. We were not a global service a few years back. Launched Prime Video channels. We've launched Linear TV. We've launched Live Sports. We even launched exclusive Live Sports and of course more. And our experience has continued to evolve and improve for our customers. I would say broadly three things excite me. One, it's the sheer pace, the pace that we operate in and the scale that we operate in, it really excites me. We are innovating every day on behalf of our customers. Uh, we have uh, shared publicly that we serve over 175 million customers and that's large scale. I think uh, Nandini used the word humbling. It's really humbling to be able to, to build and deliver and drive and help uh, provide an experience that's actually touching customers on a daily basis. We solved some challenges that uh, the industry has not seen. So quite, quite exciting that the pace and the scale. Uh, we continue to invest quite big in our Amazon Originals content. You've probably seen all the announcements recently. We've signed our deal with NFL for 11 years. We signed a deal with League One and uh, several more. And these are exclusive content that will be only available on Prime Video. Second thing that excites me is I really love working with the people that I work with um, across Prime Video and across Amazon. We all have a singular mission. We all share the same passion. And, uh, and it makes a lot of difference when you're working together cohesively, not thinking about organization boundaries or team boundaries, but, look, but working cohesively to, to innovate and deliver that experience for our customers and actually disrupt the industry too along the way. Quite, uh, quite exciting. The third piece I would say is our culture. Our culture is, is awesome. Um, it's nice to have the freedom uh, to operate. And then as you said, think long-term and we have the freedom to operate independently. It's actually nice to see our teams across our orgs operate independently, think big, think about the future, drive their roadmap, and uh, we all make mistakes. I make mistakes, all of us make mistakes, and, uh, and uh, we have a great culture. We, we encourage experimentation. We uh, make failure, we have failures, we learn from them, we improve, and uh, being able to experiment and learn and grow is, uh, is an awesome experience. I love the open discussions we have to ensure that we're building an organization that's inclusive of people with different backgrounds, different viewpoints, and uh, we have open, transparent conversation on these topics. Uh, I would say those are things that excite me. I, I can go on and on, but I think I should stop and uh, give it back to you, Nandini. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Winston. All of the things that you said definitely resonate with me, even with my short tenure. Uh, Manish, uh, you've also been uh, here and you know been sort of a pioneer of sorts and a partner in crime with Winston. So what are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm going to double down on what uh, Winston and you know uh, Nate talked about. Uh, Big Bets culture. I think uh, you know those uh, permeate within Prime Video. So you know, I, at, at Prime Video, our goal is to be input one for our customers. Um, and what does that mean? It means that every time our customers turn on their TV, they choose Prime Video as the app because we have the content that you know the customers want to watch. Um, and and we're going to get through that point to that point by making uh, big bets along the way. We've done this uh, by growing from an SWAT service to now doing, you know, uh, local channels in in uh, non just not in, uh, English speaking countries, but across the world. Uh, we've added exclusive live sports. Uh, you know, we started uh, live less than five years ago, and now we have exclusive rights for the most popular game in the U.S sport in the US. So, um, and I don't see the stopping. Uh, we'll continue making big bets. We'll continue pioneer, pioneering new business models for our customers, uh, give them, uh, increase their content selection, provide, uh, deliver new experiences. Um, and, you know, and being part of this culture where we're customer obsessed um, and focus on innovation to achieve this input one goal uh, is what excites me. And, uh, uh, you know, as, as we say in Amazon, it's still day one at Prime Video. It's always day one, yes. 
Um, one of the things that, you know, as we spoke, the thing that was common amongst all our answers was uh, what we spoke about the scale at which we operate, which is, um, uh, you know, where the next question leads us to. Uh, how does Prime Video balance reliability with scalability in an application architecture with growing global user base? Um, Manish, not to put you on the spot, but this is uh, definitely something that's right up your alley. Yeah, um, so I'd say reliability and scalability are two sides of the same coin. So they aren't really trade-offs uh, to be made against each other. Uh, our systems always have to be available. It's video. When customers hit play, their expectation is the video plays back instantly and at the best quality possible. So I, you know, from a reliability availability standpoint, it's non-negotiable. Uh, we have to treat we have to retreat it in parallel with scale. Uh, and we do this as we evolve our service architecture. So our mentality is build today with tomorrow in mind, meaning uh, we design our solutions to cater to our uh, anticipated business uh, growth years out, not just in terms of streaming volumes, but also in terms of the complexity of new features that we plan on launching. Uh, so I'll give you an example, uh, live. So in, you know, live has poses a very unique scaling challenge. When you have a popular sport like the Premier League, for example, um, you attract a very large audience base in the country, and they all join in a very short amount of time, and they stay on throughout this game. And the peaks in these live events are typically uh, multiples of what we see on our daily basis for VOD. So we have to scale up to this, uh, you know, inordinate amount for a period of three, four, three to four hours. And so we have to do this efficiently while ensuring we're always available throughout the game. Um, so, it, you know, we have to address all these scenarios um, uniquely. And so from an architectural standpoint, uh, I would say you can break down scaling into uh, three areas. Uh, scaling at the head end, so our live signal acquisition, uh, scaling our service infrastructure, and scaling delivery. Uh, so from the head end perspective, uh, you know, we scale as we expand our sports offerings. Uh, we scale by integrating with regional partners. Uh, we, you know, they, they deliver our signal acquisition, uh, content distribution, and play out. Um, and on, from a redundancy standpoint, we ensure that uh, we have full redundancy at every path uh, across our stack. Um, you know, for for example, on signal uh, signal transmission, we use both satellite and fiber. Uh, for diversity, and we typically try and run with quad redundancy for these live events. And uh, from a scaling perspective, we try and uh, push as much of our encoding workflow to the AWS cloud, uh, where we have easier elasticity and uh, it's easier to fail over. Uh, from a uh, services and stack, um, scaling our service stack, uh, we always try and scale horizontally. And we do this by uh, adopting a microservices architecture. And th that it means, you know, as we grow and our complexity grows, we try and decouple and adopt, you know, into different microservices. And what this lets you do is scale individual services uh, independently and more efficiently. And uh, for example, across regions. And we use a multi-region architecture and we have transparent cross-region failover so we can withstand regional outages. Uh, we d build load shedding capabilities so we can offload traffic from non-critical paths to the critical path of playback. So for example, uh, we have levers where we can load shed traffic from our uh, recommendations and personalization engines to ensure that we have enough capacity, uh, compute capacity for playback if required. Uh, so I think I've addressed some of the, uh, the first two. Um, Winston, do you want to take over the talk about delivery? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Manish. And uh, I think those three things that Manish pointed out are probably critical elements from a scaling perspective. But as you can kind of extend your imagination, there are multiple factors that we look at for scaling across Prime Video as we have continued to grow over the years. So from a delivery perspective, uh, we obviously increase our delivery capacity, manage and plan well to ensure that we have the capacity required to transfer bits to our customers' devices, to their homes, wherever they are worldwide. Uh, I would say it took an interesting twist in 2019, uh, as Manish alluded to regarding Premier League. Uh, it's an exclusive, uh, we had rights for exclusive Premier League games in the country where 
Premier League has played, EPL has played. And uh, we had to scale quite significantly. And uh, during the games, we were carrying a big chunk of the UK internet traffic. And obviously, this posed challenges, not just for us and what we need to scale for, but also our partners, our actual uh, eyeball networks, like the ISPs and the mobile networks. So we actually had to work with them, build capacity, figure out the right uh, mechanisms from an operational perspective. How do we manage traffic at the individual city level and the ISP level? There's a lot of uh, tech and a lot of planning we had to do with the ISPs to ensure that from an end-to-end -end perspective, our customers do have the, the required uh, capacity and therefore we can deliver a good experience to them. And we're obsessed about the customer experience to our customers. And uh, it's, uh, it's beyond just building capacity. What we have learned in the last few years is also, we can actually innovate on new technologies. I'm not going to go into all the details here, but there are interesting delivery related technologies that we can innovate on, new protocols, new ways to de de deliver, getting deep into the, the underlying network protocol. It's quite exciting as to what we can innovate with our partners to be able to deliver an experience that will be flawless to our customers, to their devices, wherever they are globally. And it's a long haul, long journey, and we'll continue to work on that, we'll continue to optimize. I would say this element of scaling from a capacity perspective has also given a very interesting twist and interesting perspective for media compression, be it purely compress, uh, compression technologies, compression efficiencies for our existing codecs, new codecs, uh, AI-based scaling, and several more that we're looking at that will actually help us reduce bits to improve the experience for our customers, to reduce congestion inside the ISPs, and ultimately deliver a good experience uh, for the content that they're viewing. So overall, uh, quite exciting, groundbreaking work that we're working on, and um, scale is probably one we talk about all the time in our groups uh, across the organization. Yeah, I mean, so I can relate to that and all the conversations that we have. Um, and uh, you spoke of experience and uh, flawless experience, and I think that's a great segue to our next question. With Amazon being such a data-driven company, how do you measure the user experience, quality of experience, and quality of service in order to continually delight your customers? Um, I think I want to jump in on this one because this is a topic that's very close to my heart. I've spent over 10 years um, really trying to work on technologies that improve the OTT quality of experience and make it best in class. And what's great is that all of the work that I've done so far, I can bring it to bear in Amazon Prime Video where I can now take all that work and directly impact the customer's experience. And uh, Manish mentioned that we want, we aspire to be input one, and we don't take our customers' trust lightly here. We know that our customers expect and demand the best quality of experience. And we look at experience very holistically. It means delivering the best video quality at the highest bit rate or resolution possible, uh, but also the best uh, content discovery experience, the best search experience, making sure that our customers are able to receive the content with the right audio languages and subtitles. And we um, choose uh, multiple avenues to measure both quality of experience as well as quality of service. Uh, we uh, collect logs from our players, our CDNs, our encoders, and measure quality of service um, metrics like throughput, latency, bandwidth, failure rates. Um, but we also have a big emphasis on quality of experience, trying to measure as close to the eyeballs of the user or the viewer what they are actually experiencing in terms of whether the video started on time, uh, whether they experienced any interruptions in the forms of buffers or error rates, but also specific metrics that are related to live, like how uh, far are we behind um, live. So we're constantly looking at ways to measure the quality of experience. But uh, at Amazon, we um, always balance objective measurement with also subjective feedback and customer anecdotes is uh, a very important uh, aspect of our um, culture. We take that very seriously. And so we monitor our customer service logs. We monitor social media uh, and try to understand what our customers are saying and what they like and don't like about our service. 
And what's great is my role is to bring all of this data together, drive the product strat data strategy and the roadmap so that all of this data is transformed into actionable insights and intelligence so that teams can take actions to improve customer experience, whether it is build, uh, use, building big data pipelines, real-time processing pipelines that can allow our operations teams to get operational intelligence to mitigate customer defects in real time or uh, help our product teams in investing in new features to delight customers, whether it's measuring the engagement on watch parties or measuring the engagement on features that Trisha's team has released on X-ray replay, replay booth. So um, it's really um, um, great that my role here allows um, Prime Video to make better decisions to drive uh, customer experiences. Trisha, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, actually, I'm going to pop it to Nate first. I think, Nate, uh, you want to talk about customer qualitative oh, feedback? Yeah. yeah, sure. No, I can do that. Um, well, I mean, I guess the way that I would, one of the things, Nandini, you, you talked about a lot about the data we look at, and it's true, we look at data all the time, and I think it's one of the most helpful ways we can do that. Um, but I think one of the other things that we do, or at least, you know, I've done in the past and is it's been super enlightening is actually sort of sit down with customers and go through the experience themselves with them. Um, so I'm talking about, you know, sitting in a room, watching them behind glass or like visiting them in their home and watching them try and use their, use your service. And I've done this in, you know, six, seven countries around the world, like visiting with customers and watching them do it. And if you are a engineer, product owner, designer, and you haven't done it and haven't seen some uh, software that you've, uh, built be used by customers live like that. Uh, it is uh, both horrifying and enlightening. So I would highly recommend it. Uh, it's a great way to do it. So we look at that in, as well, just to get that real time anecdotal feedback, which is so important to correlate with the data that we're getting. And so I would just say that's, you know, that especially, you know, from a live perspective, from an international perspective, those are the other ways that we also think about it for sure. I'll dive in there only because I know Nate and I have spent a lot of time talking about qualitative uh, customer feedback, but I wanted to say that, uh, you know, I really think at its core, uh, when you're talking about designing delightful customer experiences, it's really actually about the magic in balancing art and science of signals coming in. And what I mean by that is the science part is all of the stuff that Nadini and Manish and Winston were talking about earlier in terms of uh, quality of service, performance, buffering. Uh, Obviously, on the quant side, we also look at engagement metrics, click streams, click streams user pathing, uh, which features are getting more engagement. And then on the art side, it's everything that Nate and Nandini were talking about in terms of social listening, watching users get frustrated or also delighted. And the magic uh, in my mind is how we interpret each of those signals and the stats on their own to inform what our product met. Uh, product roadmap should consist of, and then also what the combination tells us that maybe in isolation, the quant or qual can't inform us. And uh, when you think about delighting customers and creating both a short-term uh, experimental and a long-term vision-based roadmap, uh, Oftentimes, you need to be able to start to tease apart uh, what is actually correlated with the data versus causally correlated versus uh, true of this particular uh, user set versus the other things that are like a little bit harder to measure. Like, how do you know that this animation is going to cause delight? Well, you know that when you have a social comment that says, wow, that transition was really, really awesome, right? And so being able to pair both is something that we as an organization think a lot about because we want to be able to deliver a rock solid service for our customer, but also Nandini, to your point, we also want to be able to uh, create features and feature sets that maybe they don't even know that they want yet. And the way to do that is to stare and really interrogate both the quant and the qual of the data to determine, okay, where is that hockey puck, puck going to go, to use a sports analogy, in terms of our product and strategy and a roadmap, but also in the context of what else is going on in industry and how do what do customers expect from their streaming experiences uh, that is just a hair more delightful and unexpected because my belief is the word delight. It's why I study magic because that moment of unexpected delight comes from understanding both the quant and the qual data and listening to it and seeing what is obvious and what is not apparently obvious that is sort of an indirect, oh my gosh, we're so glad that you guys did that as a feature. Uh, 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, balancing the quant and the qual is so important to share. Um, and Manish, I, I know we, uh, you know, have all these conversations about delivering the best quality of experience and how that uh, involves so many trade-offs. So would love to get your thoughts on this. Definitely. Yeah, I, I think Nandini, Nandini and I meet on pretty much on a daily basis uh, to discuss this. Uh, so I, I think, uh, you know, uh, Nandini has covered a lot of the important points about in you know, the metrics that we measure. Um, I can talk about, you know, how we use some of these metrics um, and some of the trade-offs that we have to make. Uh, so we collect all of these QOE parameters and, you know, our, our goal is to deliver the best experience. Uh, so we have to make use of them and there are trade-offs between these QOE parameters. So for example, a, a small video buffer on a player means you'll get uh, faster playback and you'll be closer to the live action in the stadium uh, and in live, uh, being closer to the live action is super important because the last thing you want is spoilers coming in from social media tweets or, or push notifications that give you the score ahead of time, right? So uh, the trade-off you get with a smaller buffer is that uh, your probability of, uh, incre of encountering a spinner while you're watching the game is a lot higher because there are fewer uh, video fragments or video frames on the player. And in poor performing networks, you may get uh, lower HD quality because uh, the player has to try and fill that buffer faster. So in PV, we have a, a luxury we have is that we own the end-to-end -end pipeline, both on VOD and live. So all the way from, you know, the studios or the camera in the stadium, all the way down to the player. So we can tune and tweak uh, our QOE experience at, at different um, stages of the pipeline. Uh, Winston covered uh, encoding optimization, so that's one, but we can also signal to our players and pass them information and build an intelligence based on, are you on a poor performing network? Uh, in which case, you know, go ahead and increase your buffer. You may be behind live, uh, so you'll, but, you're, you know, you're not going to get a lot of rebuffers. You're going to get a better HD quality, or maybe you're in a choppy network. And what you want to avoid doing is a lot of switches up and down in quality, which is a very jarring experience. So we sit there and say, hey, you're, let me signal to the player and we say you're in a choppy network. So try and maintain a, uh, you know, a, a balance in, in video quality. So, um, you know, that that's, these are good examples. So it's not just about measuring QE metrics, but it's also taking action on these metrics. And we do this on a, on a, every single session and, you know, with the purpose of making sure our customers get the best playback experience that's possible. Yeah, and, and that's, well, you know, part of what uh, is absolutely great. We treat every customer equal and we optimize for every customer's experience. And that's um, the great thing about working at Prime Video. Um, we spoke a lot about uh, live uh, being a big part of our service. And the next question is about what cloud temp technologies are most important for live video production? What tools are you using to optimize your post-production workflows for video content? Uh, Vincent, you're probably best positioned to uh, address this one. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's an important question. It's actually an important topic for us, especially with our uh, investments in live sports. And uh, we have been uh, continuously looking at how can we scale. Again, in my view, this is kind of tied to scale in a different uh, from a different perspective. So, for the industry to scale, for us to scale, to be able to deliver more sports, more engaging experiences, not just like, like a simple experience. I think for us to deliver engaging experiences, we need to be able to move to the cloud. We need to be able to do more things in the cloud that will allow us to be agile in the way we can experiment from an experience perspective, as well as innovate faster, as well as be more efficient. And I would say it's probably going to reduce carbon emission overall because it's going to reduce a bunch of travel for people just going from stadium to stadium. Uh, we have been looking at, uh, I, I think just from an overall industry perspective and what we've been looking at, I would say graphics insertion, inserting different things as the stream proceeds, uh, switching, source switching, because you have uh, different camera angles, so potentially uh, you might have a studio where there is a halftime show, and uh, uh, how do we switch between promotional content as well as studio versus stadium content, being able to do that in a frame accurate manner at scale is uh, is something that uh, that's being explored. Uh, marker insertion, add marker or study marker insertion, 
remote commentary, captions, production, multiple audio track insertion, and the list goes on. This is an area which is ripe for innovation. And we work closely with AWS as well in terms of the technologies that they are bringing to fruition in the space. And I feel collectively this industry is going to change quite a bit for the better to deliver better experiences and in a more efficient way for our customers. Manish, do you want to talk a little bit more about uh, other aspects of the cloud that we use for just from a live yeah. perspective? Yeah, I, I can address just from a prime video standpoint. Uh, I mean, our service our service stack runs entirely on the AWS cloud, um, and we always try and use AWS services where possible. Uh, with live, of course, you always have some amount of on-prem uh, infrastructure, but you know, we try and move as much of our workflow into the cloud. Um, we use elemental services quite a lot. We use uh, Media Connect to bring in the live signal to AWS. Uh, we use uh, Media Live for our encoding and Media Packager and Tailor uh, for audio video muxing and ad insertion. Um, a lot of our capabilities are, you know, we try and build an in house. Uh, that's pretty common in both Prime Video and Amazon. Uh, so things like clip generation, instant replays, uh, live to VOD conversion after uh, a broadcast. Uh, we all do that ourselves. Uh, it's all done in AWS. Uh, though we do use third-party services when it makes sense. Uh, for example, we use a real-time cloud sports stats provider, uh, and we get game schedule scores, stats, which many of our applications, um, X-ray applications, for example, use. So. Great. Um, another question that is uh, uh, very relevant to our global scale is um, how are you planning to continue to develop the availability of multilingual both text and language option in the prime interface for both new and older content? Uh, Nate, do you want to uh, address that? Uh, sure. Yeah, I can take that one. I uh, So in my prior role within Prime Video, leading the product for International, my team was charged with how do we scale up our subtitling and dubbing coverage globally. It's super important for all of our customers internationally to be able to access that. So we built systems that allowed us to reduce the manual effort to, to create subtitles and dubbing. We created workflows with third-party studios that had never created subtitles in different some of these languages to start creating them so that we could broaden that scale and give more options to customers globally because i think one of the most important things we realized is if you don't give content to customers in a language and in a manner that they can understand and that feels local to them it's like not giving them content at all so like it's it's super important to us it's one of the things we continue to invest in we want to get better we want to get faster we want to broaden the content coverage uh continually so yeah yeah and just to build on that, I think um, uh, we spent a lot of time as a group talking about uh, any customer anywhere having, having a delightful experience with Prime Video. And what that means is meeting their customers where they are, exactly what Nate was saying, both on the quant side with, again, streaming, uh, seamless streaming and high performance experiences anywhere in the world, but also that the user experience, again, to all the stuff Nate said, uh, feels inclusive to you, whatever that means for you, and whether that's the interface itself in your local language, or in the content itself as we invest uh, in expanding our selection of local content, telling local stories in native languages and a native interface, or leaning in to bring you diverse perspectives in our global releases, uh, like the Underground Railroad. And we are also committed to things that make our service more accessible. We care very much about inclusivity as a team and also as a uh, culture and also as reflected in the products that we build for our customer base. And so that means for accessibility, also including leaning in on features like broadening our time tech support so we can cover a broad range of titles. So it is something that we think about often and know we uh, have uh, we have so much passion for this space to continue to make sure that uh, we meet our customers where they are. Yeah, uh, I can definitely relate to that and Prime Video. That's why it's my go-to for a lot of the content, that regional content that I find on PD and I enjoy. Um, which leads us to the next question. What advice do you have for someone considering a role in Prime Video? Um, what keeps you in Prime Video excited and what gets you uh, uh, up every day? Uh, Tricia, do you want to take us uh, through what excites sure. you? 
I shall keep talking. <laughs> so you should uh, you should consider coming to PV, honestly, because uh, if you want to change the landscape of entertainment and tech, I mean, everything you've heard today, we're doing so many cool things on so many axes of both deep tech and customer experience. And you get to work with some of the most talented and passionate people in all vocations. I think you can hear it in the way that we're talking about it. Uh, and for me personally, it's how much impact do you really want to have, right? For me, that's about how much joy can you put in the world uh, with the experiences that you release through technology and how many people can you touch with them and Amazon has that the ambition and the scale uh, we're not afraid of hard problems we're not afraid of of, of uh, inventing algorithms to get your streaming streaming seamless or to use AIML to cover new sports scenarios. And so uh, if you want to learn and be curious about literally any topic, uh, you know, I have a background in engineering and business school, but I find every meeting I have here is about learning something new because of the impressiveness here. Uh, you should consider uh, roles in PV and uh, my team, along with everybody else, hiring lots of engineering roles across the stack product design, data science, client engineering. I'm just going to put that plug there as well, because we, we need your passion and your excitement and also your uh, your uh, uh, strong intellect as well. Yes, yes, absolutely, Tushya. I can relate to so much of what you just said. I think for me, Amazon really walks the talk of when it says it's being customer obsessed and we are not, um, uh, we don't hesitate to solve the tough problems uh, that are required to delight our customers. And uh, for me, uh, what's unique about Amazon is we, uh, when we talk about ownership in Amazon, you really get the opportunity to come up with an idea and muster the resources that you need and you will get support from smart colleagues your leaders and they will push you to achieve that goal that you're going after which is so great because you know having that ownership I always uh, worried like when I go to a big organization I am a very much of a doer and that startup mentality is something that I treasure and um, surprisingly Amazon is a massive startup we offer um, we operate like a startup uh, but yet we always think long term so it's a it's a unique dichotomy but it's great and we well, you know, uh, we move fast and we have a bias for action. And so it's an uh, absolute thrill to come every day and solve the problems that we solve. So if you are someone who really enjoys solving difficult problems, taking ownership and going the distance, then this is the place. And I would highly recommend it. Um, I, Nate, what are your thoughts here? Yeah, I, so for me, the most important thing to think about as you come into Prime Video and probably more broadly Amazon, but is just to get ready to learn. Uh, it's what keeps me here. I think Trisha mentioned it. I have been you know, at Amazon for nine years and am approaching, I guess, around six years in Prime Video. And every day I feel like I'm learning something new. And just when you're starting to get bored, like that's when you're going to get the opportunity to take on a new project, new responsibility, and learn something wholly new again. Uh, it's the most exciting part of being here. And it's I think it's one of the best parts. Uh, like I said, I was an international. I sort of, I knew our international business super well. I knew the product experience. I moved to live and I'm learning, get to learn a whole new space, a whole new set of technologies. And it's super fun and exciting. And so if you are considering it, just be ready to learn. If you're looking for a place where maybe you don't have to stretch yourself, maybe it's not the right fit, but like if you wanna learn and stretch yourself and, and gain some new skills, like it's 100% the right, right place for that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm still drinking from the fire hose. Winston, you've been here seven years. What is your experience in here? Yeah, uh, I like what you said, Nandini. It's a massive startup with a massive investment. So a good combination. Uh, I would say you should first think about uh, why you want to join Prime Video and what drives you. Uh, are you aligned with our mission to provide the most loved video streaming experience for customers worldwide. Uh, are, you are you ready to think really big? Are you ready to innovate and, uh, uh, and be on the move and disrupt the industry? I would say innovation is in our blood. And uh, even yesterday I was uh, reading a paper about a proposal for starting a brand new research program with the top university in the world. And uh, this is from a scientist who recently joined our org. So we encourage people to, to innovate on their own and drive ideas and uh, have the freedom to go and operate. So if you're prepared to innovate, join us. 
on the interview side, I would say bring your authentic self to Amazon. We are building a diverse environment. We celebrate people with different backgrounds and different experiences. So be yourself as you interview with us. Uh, as mentioned, our leadership principles are super critical. They define who we are. They define what we do, how we do. So we'll definitely assess everybody uh, against our leadership principles. I would say we'll all have fun. It's a, it's a good experience. Enjoy interviewing with Amazon, interviewing with Prime Video. And feel free to reach out to any of us. I mean, you'll find that all of us are helpful to help you to to get prepared or answer questions or whatever you want to, uh, whatever you have, please feel free to reach out. We are here to help as well, to help in your career progression. Yeah. Manish, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm going to, yeah, I would say the leadership principles comment that Winston mentioned. Uh, so when you get ready to interview at Amazon, uh, the recruiter will tell you to brush up on uh, uh, Amazon's leadership principle. We call them LPs. Um, so my advice is do the same. Uh, please read through those 16 LPs and really try and understand what they mean uh, and how Amazon has used, uh, used these LPs to grow over time uh, to its current scale. Um, you know, I can't stress how important these are in our daily life at Amazon. We live and breathe them at work, and we use them on a daily we use them on a daily basis. Uh, in, we use them in sentences uh, when discussing new ideas, solving customer problems. So, um, unlike other organizations, uh, these LPs are not suggestions or guidelines. Uh, they're core tenets in how we operate, and, and enables us to push decisions down, uh, you know, to the two pizza team level. Two pizza is like the, the you know lowest unit. Uh, uh, of a team within Amazon. Um, and, you know, if you read an Jeff's annual uh, letters to shareholders, you'll actually see these LPs uh, mentioned in there as well. So it, it kind of shows you how pervasive uh, our leadership principles are, uh, both to our company and to our success. Um, and, and if you see, we've uh, added two new uh, LPs just recently, and it's been nearly six years since we've made a change. So it, you know, shows you how important they are um, uh, how deliberate a decision it is to add them, but it also shows that we continually evaluate uh, our current culture, our current scale, and um, you know uh, adjust our LPs to reflect um, based on where we want to be in the future. Yeah, I uh, I know that the leadership principles form the basis, and really it provides a lot of shared context to people on how to operate. And for me, that's what uh, uh, is so refreshing. It's not just something that we stick on the wall. It allows people to uh, you know apply a framework to the decisions we make. So that's what's so great about them. Um, we have a lot of questions that have come through, and I'll uh, try to cover as many as possible. Start with the first. Um, Nate, this one's for you. You mentioned customer experience a few times. Can you please explain a bit more about what your team does with respect to customer experience? Sure. So, yeah. So, like I mentioned, we oversee the live events customer experience. And the best way to think about that is sort of, at Amazon, we have this LP, which is around ownership, and our team, quote unquote, like owns the customer experience for our live customers. And that means we think holistically from the end, the moment that they show up to our service and they might wanna watch something and help them discover live content, figure out if that's something they wanna watch to when they're actually engaged and watching it to post watching it like how do they feel what else what are they, what can we tell them about that content they watch how do we give them more options to watch replays all of that we think for a live customer end to end what's that experience like and that means we oftentimes partner with engineering teams beyond sort of my own engineering team to think about how do we build those experiences in other ways and that's why one of the reasons i partner so closely with so many people on the call today is because we're building these live experiences throughout our whole service. And my team helps influence and drive and oversees that experience end to end. So, you know, it's all about ownership. Um, and the great part, by the way, as I say, even though we own that, you know, overseeing that experience, there are amazing product managers throughout the org who also influence that constantly and are constantly encouraged to come up with new innovative ways to improve the live customer experience because frankly, innovation comes from everywhere, not just the product manager that is assigned to the live customer experience. Yep, it takes a village to deliver that experience. Yep, absolutely. Um, 
the next question that we have is you talked about quality of experience metrics and mentioned bitrate, but do you look at the actual picture and audio quality as well? If so, what and uh, how do you measure it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. We do uh, do that. Um, we look at perceptual uh, quality of experience as well, where we look at metrics like VMAF and we're investing in other new models to measure uh, the uh, perceptual quality of experience of both the video as well as the audio. We're partnering with uh, uh, research in the industry. We're working with uh, leading uh, research universities to come up with new models here to measure and also optimize using these uh, metrics, frankly. And audio normalization and delivering the best audio quality uh, within Prime Video is also one of our big goals. So whether it is ensuring that you don't get that loud blaring ad and then going back into this really soft uh, uh, content audio. These are all problems that we are trying to solve. Um, Winston, you had any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think you said it right. I think perceptual quality is super important. Bitrate is a very coarse metric. It's not, a, in my view, it's not the right metric for us to optimize for. But uh, the perceptual quality metric, which is based on the device, based on the type of content, uh, is important. And yeah, we've, uh, we use a VMAF and uh, there are quite a few other innovations that we are working on that will actually change how we look at perceptual quality. We are also engaged in some research around ambient conditions. I think that's another part, the ambient conditions that the customer is in, in their home or outside, and what kind of device, small device, big device. And all these things have a play in terms of what you're experiencing. And uh, I would say bitrate is uh, far from satisfactory to be able to provide that guidance for us to, be, for us to make the right decision for our customers. Yep, I totally agree, Winston. Um, the next question is, how do you differentiate your architecture with WebRTC? Um, yeah, I can um, briefly yeah. touch upon that. This is probably a deep question. It's going to take a while, but I'm going to keep it high level for want of time. Uh, we, have, we use HTTP for a lot of our delivery. We also use UDP. We uh, acquired the uh, SI technologies. Um, it's like a year and a half now and that helps us deliver very low latency streaming. Uh, we have looked at WebRTC, there are some challenges, um, and uh, we use WebRTC in some cases for some browsers, but uh, broadly we use HTTP and we use UDP. That's right, yeah. Um, the next question is, do you do lab environment comparisons with vendors encoding transcoding solutions on how they measure up against your underlying engine? Example, AWS Elemental media line of products on topics like PSNR artifacts, post encode delay and content aware um, encoding. Um, I think um, I know for certain that we spend a lot of time um, uh, testing these in the labs and we have invested in AI ML technologies to also evaluate our encoding output. Um, but uh, Winston, I, uh, I know you were trying to address yeah. that. I'll let you do we, that. We do have, we have, uh, I would, we use the word programmatic focus on this topic, both for detection that Tandini mentioned of uh, let's say anomalies and issues, but more importantly, uh, comparison between different, it could be different profiles, it could be optimization of a codec, or it could be comparing different codecs. Um, so we do have programmatic focus, we do have lab environments, we have uh, uh, mechanisms that we've invented. Uh, we've collaborated with some uh, organizations globally, some research universities globally as well, on, especially on this topic. How do, we, how do we measure perceptual quality from an optimization or from a comparison perspective that will um, help us deliver a good experience and pick the right right options. So there is a profile or a codec or let's say different codec vendors. And uh, we have also been investing quite a bit in uh, the acronym JND, just noticeable difference. And that's, uh, we are investing quite a bit of ML techniques around that as well, model, new models around that. That will help us obviously optimize our bitrate ladders, but also using JND as a mechanism for us to be able to compare different technologies. And we do this in our lab uh, and we pick what makes sense for us that will, uh, apart from the features, more importantly, from a customer experience perspective to, to ensure that we're continuing to innovate and deliver the right experience for our customers. I don't know, Manish, if you want to add something to this. No, I think you covered that, uh, covered it, Winston. Um, so yeah, not, nothing more to add. Great. 
um, this uh, really engaging um, topic. And uh, thanks so much for these questions. They were really great. And it's all the time we have for today. Um, I thank everyone who joined us today. And um, if you have any questions, please uh, reach out to us as, at Prime Video Events at Amazon.com. And do check out our careers page and our openings. And we'd be happy to answer any questions that you have with regards to the uh, openings that we have. Thank you again for joining us.